video guys so it's been a massive road to get it here one year and three months but it's finally on the road um, but to be totally fair one year and three months considering how bad the car was it's actually pretty fast especially considering that it's just been a sort of a side project for me I have had a full-time job to do um, in the meantime as well anyway let's finally take it for a spin yeah. <laughs> Howdy YouTube and welcome to another episode of The Gunman. So I thought I'd give you guys another quick update on the Tirana. It's been a while and I have done a few extra things to it. So yeah, worthy of doing an update. I uh, hope you've all been well. I have been, as you can see, Tori is looking killer. It's actually kind of due for a wash. I was like 50 BB, oh, should I give it a wash before I do this video? I'm like, nah, it's not that bad. It really doesn't need it. Um, so it stays garaged uh, pretty much most of its life unless I'm driving it around of course um, So a few things I've had done is the tinted windows. I reckon that looks awesome um, I'm actually really happy with the the look or the styling that I've gone for um, I know there's lots of people who've all got their own opinion many people prefer the blacks around the frames but to me like it's like that's an SLR 5000 thing right the black frames black door handles um, black bonnet and all of that so to me like if i'm gonna do that i'll do it properly i'll i'll do if i'm gonna mock it up as an slr 5000 i'll do the wheel flares i'll put a v8 in it and i'll i'll kind of do it properly but to me i just like it is what it is you know um and yeah it's not a full proper restoration to me a proper restoration would be to make it back to factory, right? As factory as you can. So from factory, this one here, it's an SL, right? So it actually had factory body molds all over it. It had the stainless steel trims all up here. Um, yeah, that would have just been a bit of a nightmare of a job to do. Um, I did actually have to replace these front doors. And from memory, one or two of them didn't have the little tags. And I just got to the point, I'm like, you know what? I'll just, they've got these little tab type things. They're, they're steel tabs there. I just ground them off the rest of them. Just got the angle grinder out, ground them off, filled them up and, and painted over them. And that, that looks fine now. So I do actually have a set of those, a full set of trims, which are in pretty good condition. So if there's anybody out there who needs or wants a set of those trims, just hit me up in the comments. I'll be willing to let them go you know, whatever, you know, a reasonable price. I'm not after big money for it because ultimately they're probably just going to sit there in storage for the next 15 or 20 years. So may as well go towards somebody's car. So if you know anyone who wants those stainless trims around here, even around, uh, I don't know, like I was kind of thinking about putting these ones back on, but then I'm like, I don't think it needs it, you know? So I do have the option to do that if I want to, but um, they're kind of a prick to fit and there's like they got little dents in it and they, they're kind of hard to tap out and make them look good So I'm really kind of happy with where it's at. Basically, it just needs a polish um, Yeah, there might be a couple of other little minor things that I want to do um, I think I mentioned in the uh, previous video I did cop a scratch over on there, but um, That's easy. That's 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 fine actually um, yeah, so I've, I've gone and put a new carby on it recently too. Actually, that's another thing that I do want to do a little um, So these things here were kind of um, Munted and mangled so I did actually have to do some repairs on them uh, the headlight surrounds there um, So I just thought look it's gonna be easier just paint the whole things black and Later on so they're actually meant to have like a bit. I think it's stainless And so it's, it's actually not meant to be painted silver, but I'm just gonna paint silver just sort of around that outer edge. It's too much black when you look at the front. I, I am aware of that. So um, I'm, I might even do like a, a, a silver stripe around the edge of that. I reckon that could actually look pretty cool too. Um, so yeah, obviously from factory, they're not painted bumpers, but I reckon it looks really cool with the painted bumpers. Look, 
and it just worked. For this job, it worked. Look, the, the car did start to cost towards the end. What is it, like 35,000 when I stopped counting? So it could be up to 40 or something like that. Um, but yeah, so th there was like highs and lows, rust and dents all through these um, bumpers, right? I was able to bang them out, fill them up, and sort of throw a bit of paint on them. But my point is, to have them re-chromed, you're looking at, say, $1,500, and I'm just guessing there. So probably, I'd say, minimum $800, or, or up to around $1,500 to get them both chromed. But, they would have to be in good condition to chrome them, you know what I mean? You can't have them... They needed panel beating anyway, so... Um, yeah, this this car has had more hits than Elvis. It's been hit front, back, rear, side, like everywhere, um, including the bumpers. So uh, yeah, so the front was probably the best as far as rust goes. I didn't. Uh, oh well, in saying that, actually, I did have to replace that guard because like there was a big bit of rust down there. I attempted a rust repair. I wasn't quite happy with it, so I found one of these guards for five hundred dollars. Yeah, wonderful. That's that's exactly what I needed. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm pretty I'm, I'm not pretty. I'm wrapped with how these gap how it's gapping up. It's like the the panels are really really straight. Um, so the point I'm at with that is like uh, you can like there's levels, right? Um, you can go further than what I went on this. Like there's uh, if you want to follow a page, Malamotive, the work that they do and the work that people that do their course do is incredible. But it's just it's, it's a level that I don't care for, if you know what I mean. Like, it's that level of perfection that, to me, it's like, it's still just a car, whether or not... Like, my car's here, right? They're here. But to get, I reckon, to get that extra 5 or 10% is an extra 90% work on the, um, on the body. And I just don't care for that, you know? When I'm driving down the street and everybody's checking it out, um, I really don't care whether or not it's that last 5 or 10%. I just want the 90% there type thing. And, and either way you look at it, what's underneath the metal is kind of still pretty rough, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, some panels are worse than others, but like, basically the whole car has been skimmed from ear to ear. Anywhere um, that needed filler got filler. Um, and you know the way I see it? Look, if it lasts for sort of five or ten years and a couple of start, bubbles start coming up, I know a guy. I know a guy who can fix it. And that's another thing I was going to say about um, sort of like, ta I, I take it out heaps. I, I take it down to shopping centres. I park it in normal car parks. Like some people, like, you don't see many people that do that. And I totally get it. Like, I don't blame anyone for not doing that. But that's like, I've got a different mindset. I'm a spray painter. I know how to fix it. If someone opens a door on it, I don't want that to happen, of course, but if it happens, it happens. Like, I'm not, I'm not gonna let that get in the way of me enjoying my car, you know? And if I can't take it, if I can't take it down the shops, when am I gonna take it? Like, what am I gonna just go, like, randomly drive around for the sake of driving? No, like, I wanna, like, <laughs> I, I'm not the kind of person that just does laps, you know, just for the sake of doing laps. Like, that's not me. I've never really been the kind of guy to go on cruises as such, you know, with the, with the boys. Um, you know, if I'm going to go, so I might go down the beach, um, but I'm still, the beach is the destination. Driving the car is not um, the object of uh, going for a drive down the beach, if you make sense, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, if I want to go down the beach, I'll go down the beach in the Corolla, uh, you know, but if I've got a Tirana to drive, I'll drive the Tirana. Um, but yeah, in saying that, I get it, like, because the bodywork on this, it's probably a hundred thousand dollar plus restoration and that was actually my boss that made me realize that i didn't even really think of it like that but he he's got a good point he's like man that's a probably a hundred thousand dollar resto you know if not even more you know um yeah even just the body's probably a hundred thousand because this was it was bad right it was really bad um but the way i see it my times it's kind of free you know um, and in saying that, I'm glad to have my time back. It's actually really good to have all of my time back and yeah, be able to enjoy it um, and just sort of enjoy my weekends and sort of watch movies. And yeah, that's another thing I was going to say, like I've been thinking about lately is like, um, I feel like I've clocked YouTube, if you know what I mean. Like I've done all I came here to do. It, well, and more and like tenfold what anything I came here to do. So. Um, yeah, it's nearly 10 years. It's nearly my 10 year anniversary on YouTube. So yeah, I guess when you get to those milestones, you start to reflect. And yeah, the person that I was at the start of this journey um, and the person I am now is, I guess, quite different, but very similar in, in, in saying that. But 
Um, yeah, I never could have imagined I had this much success. And yes, I do know that the channel has sort of started dipping a little bit, but I'm cool with that. Like, I guess uh, part of it is like, um, if I was to just do spray painting, spray paint, all spray painting, I'm painting this car, I'm painting that car, I'm painting that car, I know the, the views would be up on the channel, but um, I've got to enjoy what I'm doing online as well. And if, like, it gets boring to me, just editing and editing, and like, hey, I'm painting this car, I'm painting that car, you know? At the end of the day, like, I feel like it's been done. Um, I know lots of you guys just don't don't mind that they just like to watch me do spray painting videos, you know, but um, like I say, I've still got to enjoy it. Um, I, I actually kind of enjoy doing these vlog style update videos, so yeah. Um, but again, like I said to myself about three years ago, um, I'm only going to do videos when I want to do them. Like I'm not going to push myself. So at this start, like I was, I was pushing myself and just building the channel, building the channel and all that. But now, um, yeah, like a few years ago, I got to the point, I'm only going to do videos when I want to do them. And that was kind of around the time that the channel started dipping. But like I say, I'm cool with that. Anyway, let's have a look underneath the bonnet. I want to show you guys the new carby that I got. Um, Unlock. See, I've got these aftermarket seats. Man, they're cool. They're really good. They're ADR approved. That, I think they call it ADR, so they're legal, which is good. Um, the interior is looking mint. It needs a little bit of a vacuum, of course, but yeah, that's Stezza, man. That stereo crank. So I just went for that for now. I might end up getting, like, upgrading that with a reversing camera one, but. Um, like I say, it did sort of start getting expensive, so I'm like, nah, sometimes you just gotta cut it off and just say, I've got the rest of my life to fix the rest of it. But yeah, Alpine S-Series speakers, so they've got the six and a half inch, I think they are, and then they've got tweeters down there, you probably can't see them. And then, I've actually gone and put these, um, six by nines in the rear doors. I reckon they look really cool. Oh well, who cares what they look like? They sound good, but, how cool is that that they actually fit in there? Like, I didn't, <laughs> I never actually went, um, plan on doing that. It's just quite, it's just kind of happened because you're not allowed to have, um, six by nines in the parcel shop. And if you do, you've got to have them raised up on these big spaces, right? And they sort of, they get really close to touching the, um, the glass there. Um, oh, I'm just looking at those bubbles. There was actually bubbles from that window tint and they have, they've just gone and disappeared. So that's good. Um, yeah, sorry, where were we? Yeah, the 6.9s, I was, I was gonna put them on spaces in there because you're not allowed to cut holes in the uh, parcel shelf here in Victoria. Um, and then I'm like, when I had the doors apart, I'm like, geez, I wonder if they would fit there. And they did, like they just fit there. So I didn't even need any spaces or anything. Oh, actually I did, I just put these really skinny spaces. They actually came with the speakers and then got the tweeters up here too. So it all looks professional, but it's that's another thing that I was sort of mentioning in another video. The cool thing about this era of cars, you can just do shit your own way and you can do it yourself. So certain things, yes, you do need to get other people to do, like the headlining, you know? And in saying that, I know I'm gonna get some people saying, hey, you can do the headlining yourself, and I'm sure you can, but some things are just not worth the headache, you know? Um, but yeah, I did all these door trims myself. You know, just spotlight. Was it velour I felt in the suede or whatever it is? Cheap as, you know? It's kind of, it's a relaxing, enjoyable job to do yourself as well. Anyway, let's get this bonnet open. So I called up this company um, originally, right? What was happening is the, um, this is the carby that was on. I think it's a Stromberg. It doesn't actually say, it might say it actually. What is it? Yeah, it is a Stromberg, right? Um, so that's the Stromberg. I think that's just the factory one that came with it. But have a look at the size of that. It's massive. Anyway, um, that was hitting on the bonnet. You can actually even see here. Like that was actually scraping on the bonnet. Um, and you can see that ring there from where it, it had been hitting on the bonnet there um, and wearing away. So originally I was like, I was, you know, just like, I called up this pro carb place to see if we can get a, a carby that's sort of, sorry, an air cleaner that's a little bit lower, say down here or something. And he's like, man, I don't know. Like I, he didn't know exactly if he had something that would fit it or that would be ideal for it. And I said, look, what's it gonna cost to get a new carby? I said, look, no doubt it's gonna be better performance anyway. Um, and he just said, look, mate, we got this one here. It was like $800. Um, and look, I, I'm gonna give them a shout out. Pro Carb Australia, they are awesome. They took the time on the phone to walk me through. So yes, I'm not a mechanic and you know, I need a little bit of guidance here and there to make sure all the, the hoses and uh, everything's plugged up in the right place, but it is relatively basic. 
probably the hardest thing would would have been to have get the um the accelerator cable in the right spot so but in saying that like this new one it came with like full mounting bracket kit and everything so all i did was pull out one of the um the bolts for that rocker cover uh put a mounting bracket in there um and then just sort of as you can see there used the the other mount and then uh, a cross mount type thing from the original carby and then that, that's where the throttle cable holds so um yeah the only real issue i've got now is when it's cold so these have got an auto choke on them and i do remember this from years ago with the auto chokes if you can kick them off with your accelerator right so you know it's if the chokes on kick the accelerator and it'll it'll kick them off um so what will happen is like um it'll kick off even when you just you're just driving you put it into gear you know that, that'll that'll sort of turn it off and then what will happen is when it's still cold um, when you go to put your foot down, it'll just choke it out and it, it'll just um, stall. So it's it's a little bit annoying, but like I said, it's only for the first sort of five minutes while it's heating up. If anyone has any advice on that, please do let me know in the comments. I don't know if there's a little tweak I can do. Um, yeah, eventually, maybe that's something I'm going to do at, at Christmas time. I'm gonna, I've got a timing light and I'm going to muck around with the timing. I've got a mechanic mate from down there in Tassie, Brody. Um, he is what I would call the, um, I don't know what the male version of a fairy godmother is. Either way, the male version of a fairy godmother of this car. This car does have a, a, a mentor, so to speak. Or I don't know what the right word for that is, but basically this guy, Brody from um, Hobart, Anytime I've got a mechanic, he's a mechanic, right? And he actually has one of these cars too. Um, anytime I've got a problem, he's like straight away he'll help me because he's got one and he and he knows them like the back of his hand. So yeah, there's been many many times that I've just been like, man, can you please help me? I need I need some help on the Tarana, and he knows he knows everything. So shout out to Brody, thanks heaps for that. Um, but yeah, what were we talking about before? Yeah, it's just about that car. It's just, um, it just stalls a little bit when it's cold. Apart from that, it goes like the clappers, guys. I tell you what, it's a massive performance upgrade. It really is. Look, I mean, it, it is, look, it, it's not a V8, of course. It's a straight six. It's a 173, but it revs hard, man. It revs bad. Yeah, 80Ks in first. <laughs> the Trimatic three-speed transmission in it. One other thing that eventually I might get around to is the diff. So when you go from nothing, right? So no power at all. And then you, if you put the accelerator down quickly, you'll hear like a, a clunk and it's from the diff area. So I'd like to, t there's some probably some, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, gears or something uh in the diff that it sort of loosened up a bit or something it started to wear out potentially um so yeah i've called up the diff place it's only 750 dollars for a, a diff rebuild and again it's not important so it's not you know uh don't have to get it done in any rush and i have been spending a lot of money on it so i'm kind of looking forward to just chilling on the money pit for a while and catching up on some other things like bills and you know life that sort of doesn't stop but yeah anyone who's seen this at the start will actually be pretty impressed with what i've done under here like that is clean man like and i know there's some you know there's levels like i say um you know the, the, yeah some people's cars they're immaculate you can eat off them they get rid of all the cables and wires and they look incredible but for me that's a that's a clean rig you know that's that's a clean um clean engine bay i'm, I'm really happy with it that's the power steering um i installed all that myself welded that in lows they do the um the mounting bracket yeah so you can it's, it's amazing that you can get pretty much anything you need for these old classics too um another thing i did the other day was actually the the one thing that i wasn't happy with was the bonnet was sitting up and it had always sat up on this car because i've got old photos that i looked at I do need to maybe adjust it over that way a little bit, but you know, again, I've got the rest of my life to do that. But the other day, I just grabbed my big mash hammer, bang, bang, and, and lowered these bolts a little bit, and uh, lowered that uh, that thing there a little bit, and that's heaps better. Again, it's not quite perfect, and you can see it's sitting over this way, so it's tighter over here than it is over there. Um, you know, maybe a little bit of a play around, might have to play around with the um, adjustment at the back on the hinges or something, but hey, I I'm really happy with it. Um, it like, yeah, because before it was sitting way up on this corner, it was kind of like up a couple, uh, maybe a centimetre or something. Um, wheels are looking good. I do need to get it sent back to the wheel alignment because 
I can notice, see this one here, That's that looks like it's turning to the right, whereas this one over here sort of looks like it's turning straight. Yeah, you don't even need to be standing way back and have a look at them, but that, that's definitely out. Um, I'll send that back to Continental Tires again. They did a good, oh, I was really happy with the fact that when I sent these to Continental Tires, um, Marambina, they actually cared about the car. So the first place I went to, not gonna even say their name, um, you could tell they just didn't care. They had an attitude when I took it in there, they just didn't, weren't interested, gave me attitude when I'm dropping the car off. You know what I said to him? I said, mate, I'll take it away now if you want. Like, if you don't wanna work on my car, I'll, I'll take it away now. It's like, oh no, like it's here for a reason because we want the job. I'm like, mate, you don't care about this car, do you? Like, yeah, and I kinda get it. Um, because I'm in the trade, you know, uh, yeah, a lot of the time people don't want to work on people's, uh, you know, people's project cars because, you know, people can get really particular and fussy with them. So, um, yeah, a lot of the time people just want to work on ev average everyday cars without the, uh, without the stress that you get from, um, you know, picky, fussy customers. So I kind of get it, but yeah, if you don't want to work, mate, just, yeah, just tell me. <laughs> I'd rather take it somewhere that does want it, so. Um, yeah, mate, it's a clean rig. It's a very, very clean rig. Gets lots of attention on the roads, and I love driving it. Um, it's fun to drive. And let's take it for a spin. I've got some footage. I've got to do a little bit of editing on the end of this video. Um, and that's another thing I did. I, um, I'll turn that down so you can hear me. Um, yeah, so I do have personalized number plates coming soon. Gunman. Um... Gotta have the water in the boot lid. Um, yeah, I actually bolted that in so that I don't have things rolling around on the um, on the in the boot boot floor there. Got my little dust buster that stays with the car. Got to keep the car clean, mate. Why not? Um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's all good. So I got got jack wheel brace. Um, just some basic hand tools. In got some spare fuel. Even a tire inflator there. I got that. Um, just in case, you never know, it's a little 12 volt battery, uh, charger off, but I do have a spare tire there as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's neat, man, it's really neat. Um, put those bumper rubbers on the other day, I can't remember if I said that at the start of the vid. Um, but yeah, that finishes it off, like that really does. A lot of people, like they looked at it before, had those bumper, bumper, and like it just felt like it was missing something, and I agree, it did. But it's pretty much all coming together now. Like, like I say, a couple of little bits of silver on the front there. And I reckon we're just about done. But, like I say, we do actually still need to give it a bit of a cut and polish. And you may look at this and say, oh, that's a bit orange peely, but it's it's actually not. Like, it's the kind of peel that I want, right? So it's a tight peel. Um, if you go and leave your clear coat really thick and then just heave it on going really slow, a couple of things that can happen. You can trap the solvents in there because you're putting too much material on. So you're best off going thinner clear, uh, more coats, and allowing the gases to release between coats. And more thinners, counterintuitively, you would think, oh, more thinners, that's where the gas is, so you're trapping it in. But no, the gases actually get trapped in, in the thickness of the clear. So if you thin that clear down, the, the thinners will actually release. That's what releases out. So you've got thinner coats, you're putting less on, the thinners releases out, and then it's safe for you to put your next coat on without trapping the thinners in. So um, once you get solvent ball, it's there forever. You can sort of hide it with a buff, but it's still always there. If you get, if you kind of like look really close, you'll have these little air bubbles in your clear coats. Um, so that's, yeah, that's one of the big things that I did not want. Um, yeah, apart from that, like, yeah, you can, you can see that it's a very sort of a tight peel to it. I'm not sure the GoPro doesn't really pick up yeah, you can see just when you get on those lights there, and it's a very tight peel. So what I mean by that is that if you, you look at those the peel as sort of little mountains, they're sort of closer together. That means they're going to be a lot easier to sort of cut down. Whereas if they're bigger and fatter and the, there's a bigger distance between the highs and the lows, to cut it down so that there is no highs or lows, it's going to take more sanding, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, Really, really happy. And who knows what's gonna go on with the future of this channel. I've gotta try and find some more motivation to um, yeah, maybe get back into the spray painting videos, but we'll see how we go. I'm not promising anything. 10 years deep on the channel and you know, um, still, still do enjoy making videos, but 
like I say, I'm just gonna do them when I feel like it. So I'll still try to keep to a video a week and hopefully I can keep you guys interested. But yeah, let's take it for a spin. Anyway, till next time, coming out.